BTEC Applied Science Unit 1 Physics and this video is about longitudinal standing waves, stationary waves. I've already done a, a video about transverse stationary waves which is what you get on like a guitar string. This is about longitudinal stationary waves which is what you get in pipes and tubes. Now this isn't a stationary wave this is a progressive wave and it is of course its sound and looking at this you can see that there are compressions where the air molecules are close together and these compressions are traveling from left to right this is a progressive wave if you look at any individual particle you'll see it doesn't actually go anywhere it's just oscillating and it's oscillating parallel to the direction that the wave is moving in which is what happens in a, a longitudinal wave. But this is a progressive longitudinal wave. This is just another longitudinal wave, progressive wave, and I've included this because I thought it looked quite nice. And it's the wave from a speaker. And again, you can see the compressions moving away, carrying energy. But the air particles don't actually go anywhere. So this is a progressive longitudinal wave. Now in musical instruments we get something else. We get a stationary wave or a standing wave and what happens is that something produces a, a vibration. It might be a, a reed or some kind of a disturbance in the air and then the waves travel up and down the tube and they interfere with each other and they get constructive interference occurring and we get a longitudinal stationary wave, very similar to what we get in guitar strings. Okay, now there are two types of tube that we need to know. The first one we're going to look at is where it is closed at one end. So we have a tube which is closed at one end and open at the other end. So now what you must remember is that a closed end must be a node and an open end must be an antinode. A node is where the particles vibrate very, very little. An antinode is where they vibrate a lot. So an open end is an antinode. And that means that the, the biggest wavelength that we can get is when the length of the tube is equal to a quarter of a wavelength, or the wavelength is four times the length of the tube. Okay, so this is our lowest frequency. So this is our first harmonic, our fundamental, and the fundamental occurs when the length of the tube is a quarter of a wavelength. What about harmonics? Now, looking at this diagram, there's our first harmonic, our fundamental. We have a node at the closed end, an antinode at the open end. Now, we can't get the second harmonic. It would be impossible. Why can't we get the second harmonic? Because that would mean there would be a node at the open end and that's not allowed. An open end has to be an antinode. So we don't get the second harmonic, we get the third harmonic, which is three times the fundamental frequency. If we don't get the fourth harmonic, we do get the fifth harmonic. So if the tube is closed at one end, we just get odd harmonics, first, third, fifth, etc. Okay, the even harmonics aren't possible. This tube is open at both ends. And if we follow the rules from before, that means that both ends have to be an antinode and we have a node in the middle. So the, the fundamental frequency is going to be very different. And also the, the wavelength of the fundamental is going to be very different as well. So an air column open at both ends, we have an antinode at each end and we have a node in the middle and the length of the air column is half a wavelength this time, not quarter of a wavelength, half a wavelength. Again, we're going to get different harmonics this time. If you look at the first harmonic, this time we can get the second harmonic because it would be antinode at both open ends and that's allowed 
and we get the third harmonic. So this time we get all of the harmonics, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. Now all harmonics are possible. So as well as the fundamental frequency being very different, the sound, the tone of the instrument is very different because we get different harmonics. Sounds all very complicated. Uh, let's look at an example. An organ pipe has a length of 50 centimeters and it is open at both ends. What will be its fundamental wavelength and frequency? What other harmonics will be, pr will be present? And how would your answers be different if it were closed at one end? So I will show you the answers to this one if we look at these tables. So the first table open at both ends. The length of the air column, the length of the organ pipe is 0.5 meters. So that means for my first harmonic, uh, we remember if it's open at both ends, then the length of the tube is half a wavelength. So my wavelength is one meter. So my fundamental frequency will be 300 hertz. If it's open at both ends, then we can get all of the harmonics. So we'll get my fundamental 300 hertz, my second harmonic 600 hertz, my third harmonic 900 hertz, etc. All of the harmonics, all the multiples of the fundamental will be present. If we close one end of the tube, then it'll be very different. Now my first harmonic is a quarter of a wavelength, so my wavelength will be two meters because the wavelength will be four times the length of the tube. So my fundamental frequency this time will be 150 hertz. If my tube is open at both ends, it's 300 hertz. If it's closed at one end, it's 150 hertz. So it'll have a very different fundamental frequency. Also, the second harmonic isn't possible, the third harmonic is, the fourth harmonic isn't possible, the fifth harmonic is. We only get the odd harmonics. So you'll notice that the, the frequencies present will be very different. The tube will sound very different. Okay, notice when the pipe is open at both ends, the wavelength is half of that of a closed pipe. The fundamental frequency is double and we get odd and even harmonics. There are different ways you can change the note produced by the instrument. There's other factors as well. Firstly, the length of the air column is very important. The longer the air column, then the bigger the wavelength of the sound, so the lower the frequency. Just imagine a trombone. When you make the pipe longer, yes, the wavelength gets bigger, the frequency gets lower. Uh, opening and closing holes along the, the length of the air column and a lot of instruments have valves which do this and basically what happens is you are effectively changing the length of the tube and also you're changing what harmonics will be possible. An open hole for example on a, a whistle like this acts as a node and that will affect the effective length of the tube and what harmonics also, if you're a very, very good trumpet player, you can do clever things with your lips, which will affect the notes that you get and what harmonics you get as well. Another factor is the type of mouthpiece. Okay, This will affect the fundamental frequency and also what harmonics you get. There are some types of mouthpiece which act like an open end. Uh, a flute and oboe mouthpiece apparently behave like an open end, whereas a clarinet and a trumpet mouthpiece, they behave like a closed end. And because you only get the odd harmonics, they have a brighter, harsher sound. Okay, imagine the sound made by a trumpet compared to the sound made by a flute, which is a lot sweeter. Here's a couple of questions you can have a go at. A student makes a note by blowing across the end of a wooden pipe 30 centimeters long, which is open at both ends. Okay, so have a read of that, have a go at it. Uh, very similar to the one that I did earlier on in the video. The second one is an example of a, a six mark question that you might get. 
Many musical instruments involve air vibrating inside a tube. What factors will affect the frequency and the tone of the notes produced by these instruments? And again, I've talked quite a bit about this, so get some of it learned and be ready for questions like this.